If you're still using spreadsheets to manage a dividend stock portfolio, you're not taking advantage of the powerful tools that are out there. I used Yahoo Finance and spreadsheets for years, but I've switched to Stock Rover, which is a far more powerful tool for managing my dividend stock portfolio. In this video, I'll show you three features the dividend income forecaster, which tells me how much money I'm gonna make every month from my current dividend portfolio. The second is a dividend stock screener. I'll show you how to set up a screener and make tweaks to what's already there. And last, I'll show you how to build a dividend safety scorer that you can apply to your current portfolio to show you where the weak spots are and where you may need to make adjustments. Here's a look inside Stock Rover, and you're looking at my portfolio. Two of my accounts, one is with M1 Finance and one is with Fidelity, and these are taxable brokers accounts. I built these up over 30 years after maxing out my retirement accounts over the years. Any surplus dollars I had, I'd put into these taxable accounts. And I typically bought dividend growth stocks over the years to build up my passive income. But I've added more ETFs over the last decade. And now I'm slowly taking money out of this account. And so I'm using any proceeds from sales or dividends, and I'm moving that into a Roth account as Roth contributions. I'm also a small business owner. My income fluctuates, so sometimes when I need money, I tap these accounts to pay for large expenses or vacations, things like that. So for this demo, we're just looking at this M1 Finance and Fidelity accounts, but what's cool about it is it consolidates them into one view. I currently have about 60 holdings, and if I scroll down to the bottom here, the value of this portfolio is about $612,000, and the current dividends are $13,726 per year. So it's great when you have multiple accounts, you can bring them into this tool to take a complete look at your portfolio. When you open an account, you're prompted to go to this Brokerage Connect tab and you can connect however many brokers to have these consolidated views and then you can just click these boxes to line everything up. And there are different ways you can slice and dice all this information. There's analytics, there's different metrics on the entire portfolio if you want. It breaks it down by sector and portfolio allocation. Now this tool has all kinds of features to explore but I'm gonna highlight just three today because they're the ones that I use the most. First tool I wanna show you is this future income tool or future projected income. And the way this works is when you connect your accounts and you select your portfolios you wanna bring into it, it tells you exactly how much money you expect to earn from the portfolio from dividend payments. It breaks it out by month, by quarter and by year. And there are various assumptions you can make and you can change the dates and play with the dates. But this summary level is a, just a high level view, both in the table and the chart. And you can highlight these months to see how much money you're gonna make. So as someone that takes money out of my account and moves it elsewhere, either for spending or into a Roth, it's very helpful to see how much I earn each month not just for the whole year or for the quarter, but you can break it down either way. You can see in December, I'm expecting a pretty large payment. I get a lot of dividend payments in December, October, July, April. I don't get as much from this portfolio. Now you can break it down by portfolio as well. And since I have these two separate accounts, the M1 Finance account and the Fidelity taxable account, it'll break it out by the account. And if I unclick one, it'll just show me the one account. But since I'm looking at both, I can just click them both. And I like this portfolio level because it tells me where I'm receiving the money from which from which account. And actually the way I manage these accounts is I'm reinvesting the M1 finance account and the Fidelity account, I'm withdrawing the money and pushing it toward Roth contributions. And then the last view here is the holdings level. You can actually see the date that each dividend is expected to be paid, how much and from which account. Now I've seen that Schwab can do this and M1 Finance does it for that portfolio, but for whatever reason, Fidelity doesn't have this feature. TD Ameritrade used to have it and I loved it there. And I know it's at Schwab because my dad has an account at Schwab, but with Fidelity not having it and with my accounts at various brokers, I like having this consolidated view. And this is where I manage my portfolio and analyze my portfolio versus within the broker so I can look at everything at once. So this is a very cool feature feature that helps me rebalance my portfolio. It helps me make investment decisions. And it's really the primary reason why I use the Stock Rover tool. The next feature I want to show you is the stock screener. So if you're building a portfolio, if you're still in the building phase of a portfolio, Stock Rover has a collection of screeners that you can use to narrow down the pool of 5,000 some stocks to a smaller, more manageable number. Now there's a built-in dividend growth screener here that ranks these companies by the criteria. And if you can sort by rank, It'll take you from 50 to one or, or one to 50. And it's showing you these different data points for dividend growth stock. There's the dividend growth change. There's the 10 year average change. There's dividend growth history, payout ratio, forward yield. So the various dividend metrics that you expect to see. 
Now, if you wanted to modify this screener, you could just right click and modify it, or you can copy the screener and then modify it from there. That's what I recommend. You copy the screener and then make the changes. But we're just gonna take a look at this screener and see what it's showing. So here's a look at the different metrics. And this tool has something like 700 metrics that you can choose from, but you can pick your metrics and filter your criteria based on any of these metrics. And then you can score and weight a screener to add that ranking factor to it. And so for this screener, they've got a four forward dividend yield of 1.5, payout ratio less than 50, market cap greater than 5 billion, and then it's rating things like dividend increases. So if you wanted to tighten this up a little bit, you just click this edit button here, and let's say I wanted to do a payout ratio under 40, instead of 50. And it gives you these guidelines here. So there's the 10th percentile, the median, and the 90th percentile. So each of these criteria has some guidelines and to help you build that, that screener out. So you can see here that the number of stocks out of all the exchanges, the universe of exchanges, this filter is, is highlighting 256 stocks. Now, if I change this payout ratio to 40 from 50, it's gonna tighten up this screener and since that's a harder metric to fill at 40 versus 50, the number of stocks that pass this screener is 181. Once you save the screener updates and you run it in a table, it brings all those stocks into this table and then it ranks them based on the criteria that it lays out in the screener. I've created my own stock screener here based on how I invest or how I invested when I was building out this portfolio. I'm mainly maintaining this portfolio right now and not adding a lot of new stocks to it, but I do like to see when a stock is underperforming and I am selling stocks out of this portfolio to both clean out losers and reduce the number of holdings over time. This is a long-term process I intend to do for the next 10 years or so. So here's the stocks that come up in my screener. There's 49 stocks, I believe. And you've got the various metrics and you can sort by any of these like the forward yield or the dividend five-year average. So here's a look at my screener. Now this screener is simply choosing stocks and narrowing down the pool of stocks from the S&P 500 only. What I like to do when I'm researching stocks is just narrow the pool of stocks and then from that pool, determine which ones I want to invest in if I'm looking for a new stock to invest in. So the screener, I have dividend five-year average percentage, consecutive dividend growth. So this is stocks that have increased their dividend for 10 years or more, market cap over 5 billion, PE ratio under 30, dividend 10-year average a greater than 5%, forward PE less than 25, and a dividend yield greater than two. So this screener against the S&P 500 gives me about 49 stocks. If I go beyond the S&P 500, so it has this option for most U.S. listings or all exchanges or major U.S. listings, I'm going to go with major U.S. listings. It only increases to 75 because I still have that $5 billion market cap limit there. If I edit this down to 1 billion, I think it's probably going to go up quite a bit, 102. From here, you save it and then you go to run the table and there's a list of stocks that work for this screener. Now, what I didn't do for this particular screener is use the ranking. So if you click that button in the ranking, you can add a weight to each of these criteria. So if I have seven criteria here, I could add weights to five of them or four of them or whichever ones are more important or even seven and just split it up to get to 100%. And you can do that from right here. You could just say 20% for these first five. In some of them you can wait, some of the fields you can't, like consecutive dividends wouldn't let me wait it. But now I have a weighting to the screener. And if I save that and go back to the table, now I have a ranking. And so now this screener is telling me that the Canadian Natural Resources is the top stock based on all this criteria. So it's a really cool feature if you're trying to narrow down the pool of stocks out there to invest in based on various data points that you're looking for in a stock. Now this works for growth stocks, value, small cap, large cap. I'm just using it for dividends at this point. You use it however you like. Now the third way I'm using this tool is for dividend safety, to do a dividend safety check against my portfolio. And to do that, I created a whole new screener called dividend safety. Now to build this screener, I had ChatGPT help me build it. I said, ChatGPT, give me some dividend safety metrics that are available in Stock Rover and help me build out a dividend safety score to apply against my personal portfolio. So using the ChatGPT ideas and, and then editing this according to the percentiles that are provided within the tool, I was able to create this safety screener and I added weighting to it so I could actually score my portfolio. The higher the score, the safer the stock. The lower the score, then maybe I need to look at those stocks. It doesn't mean I'm gonna sell them. It doesn't mean they're lousy stocks. So it's just another data point to analyze your portfolio. So now that I have this safety screener, I can run this screener and it's gonna give me 27 stocks. And so these are stocks that are considered safe. I've got some various ratios here, debt to equity, interest coverage, free cash flow, the chowder rule, if you're on Seeking Alpha, you might 
might know about the Chowder Rule, the Altman Z-score payout ratio. But what I really love about this is now I can apply this screener to my portfolio. And to do that, you right click here and you say score portfolio, and then you choose the portfolio you want to score it against. I'm going to use this Fidelity Investments uh, individual account. So now I've applied the dividend safety screener against my portfolio, and it's going to score each company. If I sort by score, it's going to show me the top companies with the safest dividends in my portfolio. And three stocks I owned came up in that screener, Costco, Microsoft, and Parker Hannafin, as meeting seven out of seven of that criteria. So I consider now these my safest dividend stocks in my portfolio. Now I can scroll down or I can flip it the other way on the score. And now this screener doesn't apply to ETFs and I have ETFs in this portfolio. So I'm just going to ignore the ETFs right now, like the VYM and SCHD. There are different screeners for for ETFs, but that's not what this was for. And here I have some of my red flag stocks, uh, Reality Income, AT&T, Bristol Myers, Berkshire Hathaway doesn't pay a dividend, so I'm not really concerned about that one here. Even Verizon. So these are known as pretty solid dividend stocks, but they're not rating well on the safety score. And that could be due to consecutive dividend growth years. The, the payout ratio is too high. I think that's probably likely with Verizon and AT&T. The free cash flow payout ratio may not be as favorable. And so that's how you take a screener and use that as a dividend safety monitor for your portfolio. Now I'm gonna do it for my M1 Finance portfolio. I right click, I'm gonna score my M1 Finance portfolio. I own Costco in that portfolio as well, Microsoft too, but I also own Visa. And that was in the dividend safety score filter. I also own some ETFs here, so I'm ignoring those. But you can see at the bottom here, Nike and Starbucks, maybe not as strong a dividend payer as some of the others. Altria not looking as strong from a dividend safety perspective, probably because of its high yield, although we're used to that high yield, high payout ratio, because that's how they run their business. So I use these screeners to follow my portfolio, analyze data in one centralized place, and then give me some places to look when I'm doing additional research. If I'm thinking about maybe selling a position or lightening up on a loser, or maybe taking some profits from a company that I've held for a long time or a short period of time, it gives me actionable data to help make those decisions. A few other things it does, I mean, it does a lot of things you can play around for a long time in this tool. This tool has various research reports that you can can analyze and, and download if you want. There's stock ratings. They have proprietary ratings for, for stocks based on growth and valuation and, and all kinds of proprietary information here. It's very, very powerful if you're researching stocks. There's uh, alerts and ideas. And one thing I think is really cool is they list out all the metrics that are available within Stock Rover. And you can pretty much access these in any of the filters. There's 728 metrics. If you search on a word like dividends, It'll bring up the metrics that are associated with dividends. I decided to give this a try with a free trial and I loved it, so I've stuck with it. It's not for everybody, but if you like data and you have a portfolio that's complex and maybe spread out between a couple different brokers, this is a great place to consolidate that information and look at your portfolio in one place instead of putting all of your information into a spreadsheet or dumping CSV files out of your brokerage account or using Yahoo Finance, which is just the worst. It's gotten worse over the years. There's a link in the description if you wanna try Stock Rover, there's a seven day free trial. And if you use my link, I'm an affiliate partner, so I'll get a commission at no extra cost to you, but I'm an affiliate partner with Stock Rover. And I only partner with companies and products that I use and I like so that I can feel comfortable recommending them. And this is one of them. It's just a very sticky product for people who have the need for this kind of tool. Not everyone's gonna like it. It can be a little overwhelming at first. But if you have a complex portfolio with a lot of individual stocks, and especially if you have multiple brokerage accounts, it's a good way to look at your portfolio in one place and to analyze it. If you like this dividend focused content, let me know in the comments below. I usually make videos about DIY investing using ETFs and mutual funds, mostly index funds, but I still have this dividend portfolio that I built over 30 years. I'm working on reducing the number of holdings in it and simplifying my portfolio so that when I fully retire, I don't wanna be really managing stocks in a portfolio. I want to be off doing other things. So if you like the dividend content on this channel, please let me know in the comments and I'll make more just like it or similar. And if you have any ideas on future videos, I'd love to hear them. I'm Craig from retiredbeforedad.com. Thanks for watching.